Hey guys, Maud Blakey here and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how we can create a key and door system where a door is locked until you pick up a key. I'll also be showing how we can create a system that works with multiple keys and doors, as well as how we can visualize this in the editor. The project files from this video, including sprites and scripts, are available from my Patreon, link in the description. So in this scene, as you can see, all I have is a main camera, a tile map, a player, and then two sprites, one for a door and one for a key. And then in my asset folder, I have a door closed animation and a door open animation. Currently, these are not set up. We're going to set these up a little bit later. Now, what I'm first going to show you is how we can get our player to pick up a key and take that key to any door in the game. Then later on in the video, I'm going to show you how we can assign specific keys to specific doors. This means we could have multiple keys and multiple doors in one scene. So to start off with, what I'm going to do is create a key script. So on our key, let's just do add component key manager create an ad for a new script and then open this up in Visual Studio. Now on this script, what we want to do is access our player and then check when our player reaches a certain distance within the key, then change the state of the key to picked up. And then we're going to set this key to follow the player and kind of float as the player moves. So let's get a reference to our player here. So we're going to do serialize field with brackets other side of it. And this means we can access it from the editor. And then we're just going to do game object player. Next, what we're going to do is create a Boolean and we can just do public ball is picked up. And then we're going to use on trigger enter and check for our player. And when the player enters the collider bounds of this key, then we're going to set is picked up to true and have it follow our player in the update function. So what we're going to do is void on trigger enter 2D, change this parameter to other. And then we can just do if other.gameobject.compare tag is equal to player, then set is picked up to true. To make sure this isn't being enabled multiple times, it's just check if is picked up is false. If the game object that overlaps with our collider is the player and this key hasn't been picked up, then is picked up is set to true. Then in our update, we can just check if is picked up and we can set transform dot position equal to vector two. And then we're going to use the function smooth damp to make this a nice and smooth transition. And then it's asking for some parameters here. So firstly, it's looking for our current position, which is just transform dot position. Then our target is going to be player dot transform dot position. Then it's looking for a current velocity. So what we can do here is private vector two and call this vel for short. Then it wants us to put ref for a keyword before it. So we can just do ref and then vel for velocity. And then finally, it's looking for a smooth time. So we can just do public float smooth time. So now let's head back into the editor and set up what we need to in the engine. So firstly, we use the tag player. So we need to set this on our player. So mine is already set, but what you can do is press this tag and add this tag player. And if you don't have it, just press add tag press this little plus sign, type in player, and then go back to your player and add that tag. Next, we need to go onto our key and set up the collider. So let's type in collider 2D and add a box collider 2D. And then you can make this as big as you want. I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger and then I'm gonna set it to is trigger. Then finally, back on our key, let's drag in our player to the player slot here and then set the smooth time to something like one. And then we can press play and test this out. So as you can see, I can move around. And when I go close to our key here, you can see it is now picked up and it is moving towards me. For one, it is very slow. And two, it's going exactly on my position. So what we're actually gonna do is add an offset to this. So back in our script, let's create a new vector three in our if statement and just call it offset. So vector three offset, and then set this to a new vector three. And then we're gonna do zero on the X axis. And then we're gonna add about one on the Y axis and then zero on the Z. And this means it's just gonna be slightly above our player, but then we need to add it to our target in our smooth dump function. So let's do plus offset. So our target is the transform of the player as well as this offset vector. So now when we click this key, you can see it floats slightly above our player. It's still clipping into our player just a little bit. So I'm gonna adjust it slightly. And what I'm also gonna do is change the smooth time to something like 0.4. And now when I pick this key up, you can see it goes above our player and it's way quicker and will follow us wherever we go. But when we go towards our door, of course nothing happens as we've set up no functionality with this door. So now back in the editor, if we go to our door here, what I'm gonna do is add a box collider 2D. I'm gonna set is trigger to true. And then I'm just gonna resize this to a point where I am happy so that when our key goes within range of this trigger, this door will open. So the size of the collider is completely up to you and you can change it by pressing this button here. Once it's out of the way, we're gonna make a door script. So on our door, I'm gonna press add component and just type in door, press new script, create an ad, and then open this up. And what we're gonna do underneath our update function, we're gonna use the function on trigger enter 2D, change this to other, and then we're gonna check for if other.gameobject.compare tag is equal to a tag known as key with a capital K. Now we haven't set this tag up yet. Once we go back into Unity, we will add this tag to our key. And now we wanna put something inside this if statement that is gonna trigger our door to open or be unlocked. So what I'm gonna do at the top, I'm gonna to make a public ball and just call this locked. 
Now in our start function, we can just set this to true. But if the key enters the bounds of the collider on our door, we can just set locked equals to false. What we can also choose to do is add an on trigger exit function. So void on trigger exit 2D, set this to other, and then we can just copy this code and paste it in and set locked to true. So if the key goes within the bounds of the door, the door becomes unlocked. But if the door leaves those bounds, the door becomes relocked. Now this is optional. You can just set the door to remain permanently unlocked when the player reaches the door with the key. So then if they move away from the door, the door will stay unlocked or open. That's entirely up to you. So now back in the editor, let's go to our key and give the key a tag. So add tag, type in key with a capital K and then go back to our key and add that tag. But one thing that is important to note about these on collision enter functions is that in order for it to actually work, at least one of the two objects needs a rigid body because without it, collisions aren't actually gonna get processed. So I'm gonna add this to my door here because that means we can set this door to kinematic and it's not gonna add added stress onto our game. Add component, rigid body 2D, and then we can set the body type to kinematic here. Now, if we test this out in the editor, I have my door selected and you can see locked is set to true. If I go and grab our key, now our key is enabled. We can go over to our door, and as we go within the bounds, you can see locked becomes false. We can't actually see anything happen with our door, so let's add some animations to see the door open. With this door sprite, I also have two sets of animations. These two sets of sprite that I'm gonna use to make two animations, these are available on my Patreon. Otherwise, you can use your own sprites, or simply you can just change the sprites of the door depending on if the door is locked or not. So what I'm gonna do on our door, we need the animation tab down here. I'm gonna go to window, animation and the animation tab let's dock this down at the bottom here and then we can just press create animation and then we can just type in door open and in and then from here what i'm going to do is drag my project folder to the side here and then scroll down to my door open assets here where we see the door go from closed to open i'm going to select the first sprite shift select the last one and drag them all in here as i drag through this timeline you can see my door slowly open now i'm going to set the sample size to 24 just to make it that little bit slower now let's do the same for a closed animation so let's go door closed anim then i'm going to find my assets for this animation so door closed select one shift select drag them in the timeline and set the sample size to 24. so now we have those two animations now i'm going to get my animator tab here so i'm going to go window animation and animator I'm going to dock this to the right of my game tab. And if I select my door, you can see we have some animations here. What we need to do is set up some logic that when the door is set to unlocked, then the game plays the door open animation, which is just going to tell our player that this door is open. So at the moment, we as developers know, but our player does not. Firstly, let's right click, press create state and then empty. And we can just rename this to idle. And you can see it has no motion here and that is absolutely fine. So this green entry node here, when the game starts, this is where our animation is gonna start from. So currently it will go straight to our door open animation and we don't want that obviously. So let's right click on this and change set state machine default state to our idle. And then from here, right click, make transition to our door open, but we don't want this to happen straight away. Currently it will because there is no conditions in place. So let's set exit time off and set our transition duration to something like 0.12. We can always adjust these values later. But you can see here it says transition needs at least one condition or an exit time Time to be valid otherwise it will be ignored so we need to set up some conditions here that we can also control from our script so let's go up here to the top of our animator tab and go to parameters press this little plus sign here and we're going to use trigger now we're going to set up two triggers one called open and then one called closed and then we're just going to call these triggers depending on if the player goes in and out the bounds of our door now for this one we're going to door open so we want the condition to be open now if we go to our door script let's create a reference to our animator so let's do private animator anim then in our start function, we can just set anim equal to get component animator. We can go to our on trigger enter functions and we can set anim dot set trigger quotation marks and open because the key is entering the bounds of the door. So we want the door to open. So just before we test this out, we need to go to our two animations that we made and we need to turn loop time off. So you can see right here, I have them called door closed and door open. Let's just select them and turn off loop time. Otherwise these animations will continue to play over and over. And now if we test this out, we can go over to our key select it and when we go into our door you can see the door opens but when we walk away from the door the door does not close as we have not set up that functionality yet so we need to make transitions from our open to our closed animation so let's right click press make transition and go to our closed animation select this we can disable exit time and set our transition duration to 0.12 and then when we go to conditions let's set our condition to closed now we need to do the same in reverse order so closed to open exit time off 0.12 of transition duration and then our condition is going to be open. Back in our script, let's go down and set anim.set trigger closed. And we do this in our exit function. So now let's go and grab our key and then go over to our door. And when this key goes within the bounds of the door, 
you can see the door opens and when we leave it, it closes. And we can do this very frequently and you can see it is nice and seamless every time. So let's set up some basic logic now that will restart the scene whenever the door is open and we go within a certain range and we have the key. So we need a new namespace so we can access scenes. So on our door, let's do using unity engine dot scene management. And then let's get a reference to our player. So let's do serialize field to make it public in the inspector. And then we can just do game object player. Now in our update function, we're going to make a float, call it distance. And this distance is going to equal vector two dot distance. This is a simple way we can return a float. That will be the distance between two vectors. So the first one is going to be player dot transform dot position. And the second being the doors transform dot position. Now underneath this, let's check if the door is unlocked and distance is smaller than 0.5 F, then we use scene manager dot load scene and then we use a build index of zero. If you have multiple scenes, it may be easier for you to use a string where you pass in the name of your scene. But for the sake of this game, I only have one scene. So I'm just going to use a build index of zero. So now back in the editor, let's go to our door and let's drag our player into this player slot. Let's also double check our scene is set up in the build index. So let's do file, build settings, and you can see this scenes in build area. Now yours may be empty. If that is the case, just press add open scenes and your scene will be added. And you can see right in the end, it has a little zero. And this is referencing our build index. So once we go and collect our key, let's go towards our door. And when we get close enough, you can see the scene does in fact reload. But if we go to the door without the key, you can see that is not the case. Only when we go and get our key, will the scene reload. And just like that, we have a door and key system, but we can take this one step further. In your game, you might wanna have multiple keys to multiple doors. So what we're gonna do is assign a key to a door. And when this key goes within the bounds of the door, then the door will unlock. Otherwise it will not. So what we're firstly gonna do is head to our key script. And what we're gonna do, create a new field. So we can do serialize field and then game object door. Now this door is gonna be the door that you want this specific key to be assigned to. So when we go back in the editor, we're gonna make multiple keys and doors and then assign them specifically. But now that we have this door, what I'm gonna do when our player picks up this key, after we set is picked up to true, we're gonna get a reference to this door and then we're gonna do dot get component. And then we wanna get our door script that is attached to this game object. So we can just do door as that is the name of my script. And then from here, we want to make a new Boolean in our door script. And we're just going to call this key picked up. Now we haven't made this just yet. So let's go back to our door script and make a new ball and call this public ball key picked up. And while we're here, let's just scroll down to our on trigger functions and just add alongside this, if the key interacts with our bounds and this key picked up Boolean is set to true, then we can open this door. And the same goes for when the key exit these bounds. So now back to our key manager script. With this boolean made, we can now access it. So we can do door.getComponent door dot key picked up is equal to true. When the player picks up the key and the key is not picked up, we set picked up to true, which then means the key will follow the player. And then this script will access the door script on the door that we have assigned it to, reference the boolean that we just made and set it to true. And with this boolean true in our door script, when the key enters the bounds of the door and that specific key has been picked up, then the door will open and the ability to load scenes will be set to true. So now back in the editor, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to add some tile into my platform. I'm then going to duplicate my key, move it down here and then do the same for my door. Now we need to assign these keys to their respective doors. So let's grab our first key and you can see we have this door reference here. So let's grab this first door and drag it in. Then go to our second key and drag the second door in. And now if we test this out in the game, right now we know that this key here is assigned to this door. So let's test to see if this key will unlock this door, which it shouldn't. So let's go over to it and pick it up and then go to our door down here. You can see this door does not unlock. But if I go to this door, you can see it then unlocks. And now if we go down and select this key right here and go down to our bottom door, you can then see this door unlocks. And from there, we could add different functionality. So everything is working perfectly. The last thing I'm going to do is show you how we can visualize what key goes to what door. And we can do this using gizmos. So head back to your key manager script. So now we're going to use the on draw gizmos method. So let's do on draw gizmos. I'm then going to do gizmos.draw line. And the first position is going to be transform.position because this is our key. And then the second position is going to be our door dot transform dot position. And now back in the editor, you can see now we can very clearly see what key is assigned to which door because it is going based off what we have referenced on our key. To make it a little bit more editor friendly, let's do gizmos dot color is equal to new color one, one, one. And then for our alpha, we want to set this to about 0.5 F. And this is going to give our line a slight fade to it. You can see it's slightly more transparent now. 
So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. We officially have a key to door system where we have multiple keys and doors and keys only working with their respective doors. If you want the project files from this video that include both the single door method and the multiple doors method, they are all available from my Patreon. So make sure to go and check that out. Guys, I'll thank you very much for watching today's video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.